you got a battery capacity meter? Well, this is the sort of thing that uh, we're talking about here. This is the GT Power uh, 8S battery capacity meter. Um, very important to have one of these uh, at the field and when you're charging batteries and so forth. It allows you to um, have a look at what's going on with your battery. You can see the uh, overall voltage and um, as you press the, the middle button here uh, it will then tell you what the individual cells are. So you can see it's got a 1S up here on the top, so that's saying the first cell. Uh, when I hit it again, it'll go to the second cell, third cell, fourth cell, and then back to the um, uh, first one again. Uh, I can hit the mode button over here on this side, and that will take me back to the total voltage. You notice it also gives you the percentage of uh, uh, what it's drawn at, uh, so that's very handy. Uh, if uh, you're back in this main mode and you hit the mode button, then it'll tell you first off the cell that has the highest uh, voltage, and it'll tell you which one. So the um, 2S here is saying that the second cell has got the highest voltage. Press it again, and it will show me what the lowest voltage is. And so I look here, and I can see 3S, so that's number 3 cell that's got the, uh, the lowest voltage. Uh, and then press it one more time, and that'll show me the range between the highest and the lowest, uh, which uh, gives you a good indication of the condition of your battery. Uh, hit it again, and you're back at the main screen. Uh, of course, it's good for LiPos, and by plugging in a LiPo, it's told me that it is a LiPo. Uh, you can also do uh, uh, nickel-based batteries of various sorts. Um, uh, when you go to plug in these, very, it's very hard to see, but there's a minus right there up at the top of this uh, port on the end. Um, but uh, <laughs> the simple thing to do is with a servo connector, you got one side that's just all plastic, and you got another side where you can see little bits of metal. If you always keep those little bits of metal facing towards you, then that's going to be plugged in right with the negative up in the right place. So that tells you what the voltage is. Uh, but having one of these plugged in uh, also enables you to do something else, and that is to use it as a servo tester. So underneath cell it says servo, and on each of these buttons you got a large type that uh, if you press it momentarily you get the uh, thing happening that's on the top. And then there's small type below it, so this one is uh, set, servo, and um, uh, discharge. Uh, so as you um, hold that down, it then goes into a different mode. And since this was servo, it's going to a servo mode. And I've got a little dial on the end of it here. And I can crank that up and down. And it's changing from 1,000 to 2,000 uh, microseconds as far as the um, the length of the pulse that's going to the servo, and of course that's how it determines the position. So I can take a servo and plug it in, and again have little metal bits uh, towards me. In this case the negative is at the bottom. Plug it into this little port on the end here. I can get it in there okay. So the little port on the end. And now as I turn the little wheel here on the side, it makes my servo turn. Okay. Okay. Now, it also does another thing. If you hit this mode over here, you can make the thing go back and forth. And you wonder, what on earth would you want it to do that for? What happens when you're in this crazy mode here, where the thing is going back and forth, is the wheel then is determining how fast it's going to go back and forth. Okay, and you can see there comes a point where it can no longer reach the extremity. It can't respond quite fast enough. And I think you'd find if this was a digital servo that it actually might be able to do that. Um, so, gives you an idea of, of sort of responsiveness and that type of thing for a servo, and you can compare one to another. So, that can be handy when you um, uh, think about those sorts of things. I, if I hit this one more time, what it does is it just puts it right in the middle, 1500, and that can be very handy if you're setting up a plane and you want to set up the uh, control arms on the servos to be right in the middle, 
you can use the, the tester here, put the thing uh, servo in the middle, attach the arm, and you know it's all set to go. Um, as compared to having no idea where the thing might be when you're hooking up the control arm. Now, uh, one other thing that uh, this is good for when you uh, got this sort of thing, and that is, I've got my little uh, test rig here, and I've shared this uh, when we talked about the uh, battery charging, but I'll, I'll share it again now. Um, I, I often use this rig to uh, get the battery down to the storage voltage that we want. Now, I can plug in this guy, and again, metal things towards me, brown is at the bottom, uh, into the servo thing here. And if I've got the thing plugged in, I make sure I've got everything safe. This is secured, prop is clear, I'm away from the prop. Um, the dial is all the way down, hook up the battery. Okay, so we got power. And now you can see I've got my 6 volts on the, uh, the meter here. Well, with that being the case, I can then use this to run the motor. And, oh, <laughs> I can use this to run the motor, but I do have to get it into servo mode first. Uh, and right now this is complaining. Let's get it into servo mode. Okay, now it stopped complaining. Those single beeps that you heard, that's telling us that there's a throttle fault, okay? And it had a throttle fault because this wasn't in servo mode and it wasn't receiving a throttle signal. So that's why we had those single beeps happening. Anyway, now I got a thousand, so that's the low setting. And if I gradually dial this thing up, I can run my motor. So I don't need to have a receiver hooked up to this to be able to either test a motor or to just use a rig like this to uh, discharge a battery. Uh, downside of that is that if I've got this thing in that mode, uh, it's not going to also show me what's going on here. Uh, so I'd have to get out of that. Uh, but very quickly I can get to that. Uh, uh, let's see. Actually, no, that's still telling me the voltage over here. So I'd actually have to disconnect that. Oh, it's still on NICAD. <laughs> okay. So I have to plug this thing back in from scratch to be able to give me the, uh, the voltage uh, to know whether I'm right as far as storage or not. Well, that's the uh, GT Power um, uh, battery capacity meter. And um, if you don't have one of these things, get one or something like it. Um, they're a great handy thing to have. Well, thank you for watching today's video. We try to produce a lot of helpful information. Yeah, I include some crazy ideas and some really good tips. All of it I trust that you find to be quite interesting. So, subscribe to our channel. You see the link down here uh, at the bottom. And uh, as you do so, browse through our videos and you'll find a great deal of variety there. There'll be tips and tricks on how to do various things, such as what we've shown you today. Uh, there's flying demonstrations, there's uh, tips on how to do uh, the flying itself, as well as how to uh, set up your transmitter and you know, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, I, be a subscriber. Uh, we would appreciate it, and you'll benefit a lot from it. So this is RC Jim signing off. You have a great day, and enjoy your flying.